السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمدللہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام على رسول الکریم وعلى اله وصحبہ اجمعین اما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم we thank Allah we praise him and to him is our return peace and blessings on all the prophets and on the final prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all those who follow righteousness jazakallah sisters and brothers for being here let's focus on what we have gathered here for we are here as a buj islamic studies orientation program and mashallah you all are representing your own institutions your schools some of you are in academic school which means that you are part of the curriculum that you've been researching on so alhamdulillah welcome to all of you some of you are, are by and on your ways you leading the light you doing some islamic studies inshallah this curriculum is meant to help all of us together those who inshallah have taken the curriculum will benefit from knowing what the curriculum is about and those inshallah who are looking at the research partners probably you will go back and make some positive changes in your school probably look forward to joining us as a team in terms of what we do in research but overall you will get something of what we are trying to do the program that we call teaching as leadership i divided this program into few segments and uh, if if i can quickly ask us if everyone got a small schedule of what the whole day will look like right uh, i have a copy of your schedule this is just what the whole day will look like i'll quickly run through it brothers and sisters so that you are aware of where we stand what you will be doing in the next 3 hours that we spend here inshallah you will hopefully benefit from the program i'll keep using a lot of the board the main three goals that we're looking at is the first will start with the very purpose of academo very purpose of this program why we are doing the program as we go into islamic studies as a subject what are our outcomes what can we learn from teaching islam in our schools and then we'll talk about teachers manual the use of it what resources we have the next session will be on session planning how you do a time management technique i inshallah will spend some time on that we'll have a small game that i would like you all to inshallah play buruj believe in fun learn so hopefully you'll have some fun and as 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 you start having fun you'll actually ensure that when the school restart maybe a week later or maybe now what can you do to get your students excited about islamic studies When we do a program like this nature, we have three simple goals, and I'll just put those goals in charge of Allah: tarbiya, tasfiya, and tafakkur. Mashallah, why we are here, and Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah for accepting the invitation that brothers have been going around and telling all of you. Subhanallah, I hope that you get three things from our program today. Number one is tarbiya. What does tarbiya stand for? What would the English word for tarbiya be? Nurturing, right? Imam Ibn Hazm Al Andalusi. He said a beautiful statement that when a knowledge is learned in one shot, it goes away in one shot. Subhanallah. When you learn something like on a quick crash course or a one-day workshop, Subhanallah, it will stay. But when we are looking at tarbiya, when we are looking at real nurturing, it needs a lot of time. And that's exactly what we are here for. We need to give ourselves an opportunity to know our children, to make our children learn really well. Maybe a redundant question, but can I ask you? How many of you also do biology in your school? Any anybody who biology teacher, or maybe who's inclined towards biology? How many of you like life sciences? Right, brother, you like life sciences? Let me ask a question to you. Very rhetoric. Everybody can answer, but maybe you will understand what I'm saying. There are two groups of students. Group one is a very overexcited, enthusiastic bunch of kids. So you give some seeds to them, and you tell them to plant a tree. So they go every day. They plant the tree. The other group is laid back. They want some time about. This is fine. We will give the right ingredients, but we will hold on. So the first group, which is like the eager, excited group, they go and they start digging the soil every day. They are very hard working, right? So they dig the soil to check if the seeds now sprouting into a small plant. Every day they go. They they take the soil away. They check. They put the soil back. The second one, laid back group. They let the sunlight come in. They put the right manure. They put the right water. Which one will grow? What will be excited one, enthusiastic one? Enthusiasm in the wrong place is infectious, isn't it? We need to understand that this is what are we doing in Islamic studies. You can't make a child who had this and an alim when he is already still understanding what problem solving or what world is like. Give them time. That is what Tarbiya is all about. Subhanallah. I also hope that when we start the whole idea, there will be some lessons you can take back from today's workshop. Tasya, your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. What can we do as a teacher? What can we do as a Muslim or Muslim? That's my part of Tasya, and hopefully we will poke you enough. We will try to, inshallah, make you uncomfortable enough so that you do a little fikr, tafakkur. 
You do a little introspection. You contemplate on what are we doing today. You know, today we are making ourselves into concrete jungle. I know without the air condition how we feel. Imagine what are we doing with the children. There is so much of love lost to the nature. Try doing a workshop or a program with your kids under the tree. Probably you will be uncomfortable. Allah talks about Afala al Zurun al Ibn Kaifa Falekar. While it's Samai and while it's Jibari and while it's Ardi, Allah is talking about things around instead of Russia. And here we are not even connected with the nature. A lot of part of the curriculum that we worked on is to get back to the real roots. Make them animal lovers, make them naturalists, make them kinesthetic. Can we do that? And if Islamic studies cannot do that, which subject can? It's not biology or geography. So hopefully we'll make you, inshallah, think about this as the first part. The whole idea of my doing this program is, inshallah, the first part, I want you to understand that what you are doing today, brothers and sisters, is doing this part. Leadership is what you are doing. When you take up the mantle of Islamic studies in a school, you are actually heading the leadership division in the school. And we say, leadership is like an umbrella. What does an umbrella do? What does an umbrella do? It protects you from what? From the sun, from the rain, from the elements of the nature. Yes? But if an umbrella protects you, what would a roof do then? Wouldn't roof protect you as well? So what's the difference between a roof and an umbrella? Barakallah Umbrella is actually pushing you on mobility. You're on the go, you're on the run. And this is what we're looking at. Leadership is not static leadership. Leadership is which one makes you, pushes you to do things. And that's what education is all about. That's what tarbiya is all about. If the seeds were not sprouting into small shrubs, into plants, into trees, why are we even teaching? If you don't see changes, incremental, small changes, but if you do not see those changes, I think we are not doing enough. Have you seen the rocking horse analogy? Rocking horse? Where a little kid comes and sits on a horse, and the horse rocks. This is the horse rocks. Does the horse go anywhere? Or the treadmill. How many people are on the treadmill? We think they are going miles away, actually still there. A lot of people have left the comfort of the nature. We want to go to the gym because the air condition is there. And we want to run on a treadmill. I said, treadmill? Come on, we can't be so materialistic. Subhanallah. This is exactly what leadership is about. You are pushing your school. You are pushing your Islamic service department. You are pushing yourself to excel. And that only can happen by this analogy of an umbrella. Fair enough, I give an analogy of an umbrella. Let me give you something else. I have some wonderful brothers and sisters who help me with their criticism, who help me with their, with their help, mashallah, they give me a lot of books to support. One of the best gifts I got was this book. I'm still the person reading, called Teaching as Leadership. As I read this book, it's a lovely book for you to have in your school library. It's an entire program on a concept called Teach for America framework. There's a lady by the name of Judy uh, Wendy Kopp. What she did was something amazing. Really, you must praise the effort of the people. They said there are a lot of people, a lot of children, deprived of good education. So you go to a slum, especially it's speech for America, so you go to African-American uh, societies, the socio-economic background is so low that they cannot teach well. Or they don't have good infrastructure or good teachers. And then it's all about people. Right? It's, everything is about people. Let me tell you something else. Umar bin al-Khattab asked the Sahabas, Make a wish. Make a wish. Make a dua. So the Sahaba said, what would you wish for? What kind of wish will you make for? Make a wish. Peace. Okay? P-I-E-C-E -E or P-E-A-C-E? -E? Alright. The Sahaba thought a little bigger. They said, we want Mount Ohad to be like gold and I'll give it for hair. Peace of Allah. Umar said, no, not impressed. I'm not really excited about it. Some said, no, no, I'll make the Bahar. Ya Umar, the Bahar. The ocean still with rubies and peace of Allah. I'll give for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. Umar said, no, not happy. I'm not, it's not happening. So they said, Amirul Mu'mineen, you have something in your mind. You tell us what you think. If you had one dua that would be accepted, what would your dua be? Umar looks at them, thinks about it, and he says, I would have made a dua. I would have wished that this room is filled with people like Abu Ubeda bin al Jarra and Salim bin Mola. Salim bin Mola, his own slave. Abu Ubeda, you all know, the trustee of the nation. He said, Wallahi Nazim, give me people like them and I'll fill the world with Islam. It's about people. Teaching is all about people. They understood it better than us. So when 
the Teach for America campaign started, what they did is they went to the corporates, they went to Google, they went to Apple, they went to Microsoft, they went to uh, what are the companies you can think of? Ford Motors, and they said, give me your best employee who is inclined to a teaching for two years. And I will make them teach for these underprivileged, these deprived children. Wow, what a concept. So this is good. So they would go to companies and get an employee of Google to come and teach the African American slums. What about the salary? Yes? Same? Of course. You know, when we expect, we say, no, 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 khalas, so Allah SWT, no, you don't earn. Don't eat for one year. It's okay. Don't feed your family. Don't take them out for vacation. No. These people think smart. Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he became a Khalifa, he wanted one sheep a day. And Umar said, no, we can't give you one sheep a day. Abu Bakr said, this is it, otherwise I go and do my tijara. Ali ibn Abi Talib said, give him what he wants. And they gave him one sheep a day. Not for their eating, probably they had a lot of guests around. So now, they went to something called CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. They said that we will continue the salary, maybe one third of what they are already getting. But they want to teach, so they will now go to these places and teach. SubhanAllah, now imagine you are being taught, your children or the slums are being taught by the most proficient executive in the companies. India adopted that. A lady by the name of Shine Mistri, she worked with Tata Motor, sorry, Tata Collaborative, and along with them she did the CSR in the Indian companies. So now teach for India, teach for America. These are a roaring success. I call upon you sisters and brothers. When will teach for Islam happen? When will we rise up and say, we are needed for our being? You may be in fantastic corporate world. Go and spread the word. Islam needs you, it is calling you. We are not here in terms of kabilas or communities or languages or nations. We are looking at the world after this. We want teach for Islam. And inshallah ta'ala, I'll just share, a lot of you may know about what I'm talking about. There is a concept which is begin with why. Heard of that? Begin with why? Every time you start asking Islamic studies in my school, do not ask how. Do not ask, can I do it? Ask, why am I doing it? And this is a concept very popular in tech talk by Simon Sinek called the Golden Circle. Golden Circle is a concept where it says that you, whatever you start with, wherever you start with, ask yourself the first question is this why. Why am I doing what am I doing? You know, most of us start doing the schools start doing Islamic studies in a school, then we say, okay, how do I do the school project? You started with a good question, why? But because of the administration, because of the finances, because of logistics, how do I manage it? How do I complete my portion? How do I do this? And then you go to, what is it needed to do it? Let's just get over it. We always forget the fundamental question, the rudimentary question is, begin with why? Ali bin Abi Talib asked this question of beginning with why. He asked, I'm asking a lot of questions to you, right? That's an inquiry-based learning. That's how we learn. Ali asked his student, what is the purpose of the rains? Remember the umbrella? Let's come to the rains. SubhanAllah. So what's the purpose of the rain? Why does it rain, brothers? Yes? So you get school holidays. Why does it rain? That's a great purpose, mashallah. Okay, to use your umbrella. Wonderful, mashallah, sister. You get a gift for that. May not be the right answer, but who cares about the right answers all the time? Why does it rain? What's the purpose? Vegetation. Make the land fertile. Give us water. Ali said, oh, These are amazing people. They think on such a different plane that these answers are not just satisfying them. So they said, Ali, you tell us why does it rain? What's the purpose of the rain? And Ali bin Abi Talib, Rabbi Allah Ta'ala, the cousin and the son-in-law of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says the purpose of the rain is for waqir. The purpose of the rain is the fruit. The fruit that you have in the morning, the mouse, the tuffas, the pineapples that you have to have, the mangoes, he says that's the purpose of the rain. All the other things are just side characters. Begin with why. Why did it rain? For you to enjoy your delicious mango. And that's subhanAllah so beautiful. It's so profound. Why are you doing Islamic studies in your school? So that you're called an Islamic studies school, or you call called Islamic school, or you really want some changes in your children. If you know the why, inshallah ta'ala, you will know the reason you're working on. So inshallah, I hope when we are clear of the why of Islamic studies, believe me, the whole process is so wonderful. The joy of teaching. One last example before we go to our second session on what we are doing really about Islamic studies. You know, imagine if I come to you and I say about my car till I'm working for Google. Would you be impressed? Like, wow, working for Google. That's like smart. 
It's like Teach for America. I'm doing this company and this is my work. But think of it now. Sisters, those who have taken up Islamic studies, go print a business card immediately. It says working for Allah. I'm recruited directly because here I am an ambassador of the Lord of the world because I'm teaching his team. I'm not teaching anything else. Now your business card says I'm working for Allah smart Allah. And one, it's one thing, I can always go and print my business card which says working for Google, but the more important thing is what? Google should acknowledge me that I'm working for them. I can go and print any company in the world, right? It doesn't matter. It's very cheap. I have a brother, mashallah, in Roy Petta, who can print me some nice business cards. And I hope he'll do it cheap also. Now, the point is, is Google acknowledging me? Are they accepting me as a part of the employer system? This is very important. When you say you're working for Allah Azza wa is Allah accepting us? So many of us, in fact, all of us, how many of you desire to go to Jannah? Please raise your hands. How many of you deserve to go to Jannah? We are not sure about it. We will not be sure until Allah Azza wa Jalla comes uh, Amal, what are you deserving on? What are you telling that on? What's your basis? What's your dalil? Till a hand span. Until a hand span is between you and your death, you are not sure. That's the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Being desiring something is wonderful. Desiring. So many brothers have so many desires, mashallah. One, two, three, four. Are you deserving of it? You can take care of one family, mashallah, that you all have. This is what begin with why. When you can't begin with why, when you can't tell yourself what success is, subhanAllah, you're not going to do that. I'll play a beautiful riwayah narrated by Nomar in the Bashir, something so profound, it will tell us why we study Islamic studies. <laughs> Islamic studies curriculum, we said curriculum is just a framework. 
Despite the fact that he spent around nine years doing the Guru's curriculum, I would still have hesitation and doubt and say this is the best. He cannot ever claim that. Neither is it free from defect. It's not a muzzle. It's a work of a small research team which is very passionate, which wants to spread the word of Allah Azawajal, but it is one of the many curriculums there. But yes, now when we start working hard, we start to put some ideas, some concepts that I'll be sharing with you. What can we really do to make Islamic studies the best period, the best subject for a child in the school? But it is first your yaqeen that you are supposed to be the best. Do not worry, we have our outcomes, we have our limitations, we have weaknesses. It's secondary now. The moment you are chosen to work for Allah's deen, remember one call I always say in Guru, something very important. Allah does not call the qualified. Allah qualifies the call. You know, remember, I'll, I'll restate what I'm saying to you. Allah does not call the qualified. Allah qualifies the call. There are people who are smarter than you who are not in this auditorium. There are people who are more intelligent who are not teaching Islamic studies. There are people who have graduates from Jamia al Madina and Jamia al Azhar. They are sitting in embassies and doing translations. There are people who have more knowledge, more ilm, more money. Probably Allah SWT bypass all of them to come to you. When Allah chose you to speak this religion of His, Allah will qualify you. Allah will give you a credential. Allah will make sure that you become the best of those stars. Let's come, brothers and sisters, to the second part of Islamic studies as a subject. What I've done is I've shared some of the manuals. Uh, anyone who, any, all five or six people or brothers and sisters have some manual among them. So I keep referring to it and you know what I'm talking about. Inshallah, I'll try to use this as my base, but hopefully you will learn much more just beyond the curriculum itself. The curriculum that we want to work for, we said, what does child really want? Let's go back to a child psychology. And in child psychology, what is that that sticks to a child? What is it that a child loves to do? So we went to a book called Make to Stick. It's a lovely book. I'll inshallah share this, uh, what the book is all about. And he said, one of the things that a child would love to do is get an engaged factor with the curriculum or the book they're doing. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a very well-known study of the Sesame Street that we know. The Sesame Street is a popular cartoon serial, maybe with puppets and all, with the Big Bird, with the Big Mac, with the Joe and all. What they realized with Sesame Street is they would play Sesame Street on, let's say, Monday. And Monday, these small children would go and see the bird, see the whole episode, they would love it. Then they would play the same thing on Tuesday. They would love it even better. Same thing the third day. You see, we adults don't work like children. The children love a sense of belonging. They love to be associated over and over again. Then they did a sampling of Friday. The same set of children who have seen the episode on Monday, they loved it on Friday. And the viewership rating was highest on Sunday when they see for the seventh time. You know why? Because of association. Because now, a child comes and says, you know mommy, what's going to happen after this? I know this. You know mommy, this is going to fall down or she's going to fly away. The fact that the children feel they are in control of the whole thing, they know everything in and out, makes them more engaged to the episode. This is exactly the principle of theme-based learning. What I mean by theme-based learning is when you want something to stick, you don't allow them to call book one, book two, book three. And that numbers are for us. Numbers are just a reflection. SubhanAllah. Which is why sisters don't mind. They don't like sharing the ages, right? What is in a number? Numbers is not what we have a trick, we have a math trick. Where you say think of a number, double it, multiply by seven, divide this, okay, divide by something, and they get an answer. I said that's your age. I'll not play that right now, right? We'll do it in MI theory. So we have about six, mashallah. So in an interview, you have to go through the whole process and the sister doesn't write date of birth, the last column is empty. But for children, it's association. They don't understand the numbers. They understand my yellow book, number one. So what we did is, okay, this series is for small children, pre-primary and primary children. Can we have the biggest thing? That is obviously not the biggest star in the, in the galaxy, but probably what is more obvious, the sun, can we call the Sham series for the smaller children? So it's fine. Shams is for smaller children. They will associate this as their Islamic study book. Remember, I emphasize the word underline it mentally T H E I R. Is that right? There? Yes, good. Right? It's your book. You own it. You possess it. And that becomes very important. Then I'm going to say, okay, 
We're not opening the book. I don't even want you to open the book. But what is it that can stick? And this can be applied to anything, sisters and brothers. Not because I'm just being hell of guru, I would like to say, but because it's an orientation program on the curriculum, you get familiar with it. We said, okay, can we have some common theme? So what theme do you see here in the eight books? Yes? The yellow color? Oh. Only one of them is? Rest is all profit. All right, I'll come to you. Which one doesn't agree? The last one? Okay, good, mashallah, don't worry. That will be a challenge for my research team to say it doesn't agree to it. We'll make sure it agrees now. Fine. Now, this is a simple concept of the Prophet series. It's not in Turkey, so it's not Adam and No, and it has to have Idris or it has to have Ibrahim. It will go in random order. It's like a Quran. You pick up a Quran, you don't expect to talk about Adam al Islam in the first chapter. It may even talk about Musa al Islam. It will talk about Isa al Islam. It is this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want you to think linearly. If it was very linear, Allah would have said the first surah will be with the first chapter of the Quran, the second surah is second, surah Nas is the last chapter. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be a little complicated people. Brother, especially, this is already very complicated. Yes? Allah wants you to think analytically. So we said, alright, we will look, we will let the design team look at the design only on the context part. Every book is a reflection of one prophet story. The problem was one, I'll skip one. Can I go to the lower part? Number five? Who has number five with you? Anybody who's having book five? You can see here, it may not be very clear. Which prophet? Yes, sister, which prophet are we talking about? Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now, if you look at the book, if you open a book five, the entire thing is the entire five days of Hajj. So you have a Mina, a Muzdalifa, you have silver stones in Muzdalifa, you have tents of Mina. Even the page numbers are made like the, like the tent of a Mina. Why? I would like that child to go to an experience of a Hajj in the entire few days that she or he or, or, or the one year that the book is attached to the child. So now this is the story of Ibrahim. Of course, what we will do is post Ramadan, the schools which are shall part of it, we will make an event around these books. It's your project work. So a child is learning beyond the book. It's learning besides the book. I was telling some of the group today, have you heard the statement called think outside the box? Heard that? Change the statement. What is the new statement? Think there is no box. Why is the box always there with you? Take the box away. There is no box, mashallah. So now we're going to do project. This will be what? As how we feel. This will be? The Suleiman and Islam. You see that the book book there, inside there are small ants around of course. So, mashallah, we would like them to show what is Masjid Aqsa and what is Kubat Sokhara. A lot of us do not even, I was doing it last time and they said, no, this is not Masjid Aqsa. Isn't it? It's, the yellow is missing out or the golden is missing out. No, that's the golden dome. This is the diapolitic structure, the way it is. This is the Masjid Aqsa. Where Rasulullah led the Salah for all the Prophets. The entire thing is based on some theme of a Prophet. So the last one will be which one? Tell me three things about Yunus in Matam. What are three things you know about Yunus? Okay, the big fish, the, the captured the Yunus, alright. What else? Yes? Alright, the dua, the ship at the end. Okay, there's some ships all around. That's just an ocean picture, right? Yes? He fell down from a ship, okay. Okay, Masha, the whole story is already being constructed here. Imagine without just the picture on the cover, you are telling a story to a child. And remember the usul of three. Suwala Salasa. The three questions that you ask. And these are three questions you will be continuously asking throughout the episode. You ask three things about everything on this chapter. Three things about Yunus al Islam. I got the dua. I got the brother telling the episode. I got where was Yunus al Islam from? Nineveh, mashallah. Now, even before you go, the child now says, Oh, this is my book and this is my prophet for the one year. I'm going to enjoy as him as my role model. I'm going to talk about Yunus alayhi salam. If you want to do diversions with mind maps, you'll talk about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi talking about Yunus alayhi salam. Where? When we speak about Yunus alayhi salam? Outside Taif. Barakallah. What are the name of the slave? Adas. Right, mashallah. So suddenly we're getting a hundred. Look at those Sira teachers out here, don't worry. Okay. One was a problem, what's, what's one with? What's the theme on one? It's a garden. Hadika. Hadika? Adam alayhi salam. Fair enough. It's about connections. Now you don't have to look for where is Adam alayhi salam. It's all about connections. You know, the problem was 
we have a thin line between fantasy and reality. And thanks to the Superman and the Spider-Man and the Doraemon, the line has already been blurred. Our children are not able to fantasize as the Quran would like for Rivers that are flowing of honey, of milk, of pure water, of wine. And we are not able to do why? Because you know, there was a mother which sued the Superman comics because her son jumped from the sixth floor and she died. She thought the Superman would come and save him. There is a documentary as a part of the school. Please download or buy the documentary and watch it called Waiting for Superman. It's about the United States education system. They're waiting for Superman as the Yahudis are waiting for Messiah who will come and correct them. Yes, they will be corrected. Not the way they think. They will be corrected in the way that they will punish. Waiting for Superman is a lovely documentary. Every school teacher should watch it about how the United States is falling in literacy and mathematics in the grades. Numeracy and literacy grades. So this is the entire thing. This is of course no alayhi salam. What would this be then? Alright, Barakallah Fee. So we are looking at things around the curriculum. Hold on, I will not go to the Kamar first. Let me go and explain a lovely model in education. Let's define what makes our school successful. What is success at the end of the day? What success? Can anybody define success? Achievement. Achievement, okay. Achieve in a proper way. I also do a little counseling on parenting side. Since you was use the word achievement, just tell me something. I'll tell you something very important, profound. Men always value achievement. Women value relationships. There's a difference between the two. Men would like to talk about the achievements. Oh, I drove this Ferrari today. The Bentley was 100 at, at K and PH. And the women were all about relationships. SubhanAllah, when you start talking to children at a higher grade, you need to keep the difference in mind. You cannot have a customized curriculum for boys and girls in grade 7 and 8. You will have a need of a curriculum which distinguishes between the two. The girls' need are very emotional. They will talk about relationship. There are very different uh, uh, changes that are happening in the human body at that time. And Islamic studies is the only curriculum that has to deal with it. It's very unfortunate. Today, when we are not in a deal with crisis, what do we do? You see the ostriches, what do ostriches do? They put the head. I was in Colombo last week and I went to a school and the school was very proud. They said, you know, we had a bad picture in a biology book. They talk about human anatomy and what we did, if we, we cut the picture and we removed them. I said, how many pages? They said, two pages. I said, what did you do? We removed the pages and we threw it away. Is that how you teach about human anatomy? Is that how you teach about biology? I said, you know what you just did? You made your students you are talking about class 8, 9, boys and girls. You made them absolutely curious. Why did you tear the pages? That's an ostrich approach. When your boys and girls are talking about this time, subhanAllah, instead of confronting and telling the right language, we are not using the right sense. Success is a shy bird. You try to catch it, she'll fly away. You lay a trap for her, she'll come and fall in the trap. It's all about success. You know, I'll, I'll give an example of what success means in a small example. In a book called Made to Stick, why would some subjects stick and why some do not? And this applies to everything we do in Guruj and inshallah you will be doing in your curriculum. What is the root word of success? So there is a group of people, mashallah, these two authors, the head brothers, they wrote a book Made to Stick. That's how the cover looks like. So they define success as something very, very ordinary. He said, success S stands for simple. Whatever you do, make it very, very simple. Unexpected, people should be surprised by it. Then it is credible, concrete, emotional, and I'll just, uh, let me give an example to make it more easy. These are the keywords, right? John F. Kennedy, in, when he was the President of the United States, he said that I will send a man on moon. Fair enough? Now look at the way the power of the message, how it stuck. And that's what the book says. The book is an example of this man on the moon. This is exactly the way human art teaches Islamic said. If you can't make it stick, they'll forget it. What will you do? Was it simple? A man on the moon? Everybody understands it? It was the simplest of concept. A man goes to the moon. Very simple. People accepted it. But was it unexpected? Absolutely. A man on the moon? Or like, man on the moon? This is wonderful. I don't get home on time. So he said, okay, fine, this is unexpected. Then, but it should be concrete. Success parameters should be defined. If a man goes on moon, it's victory. If he doesn't go on moon, is it victory? 
No. So it's very, very concrete. It is absolutely black and white. This is simple. But was it credible? Who is saying it? The President of the United States. Of course, it's not credible for us anymore. Right? There was a time when they were keeping their words. SubhanAllah. But the President of the, perhaps the most powerful nation in the world is saying, I am sending a man on moon. Suddenly it became very, very sure. But was it emotional? It's not America's victory. It's the world's victory. Man, humankind on the moon. Suddenly they made an entire story. And that's what it fits. I told yesterday also about stories people will remember. People will forget statistics. You will forget all the numbers you have learned. But you will remember the stories people told you. They did not add, they just added success like that. I added one more for the sunnah. If it is from the Quran and the Sunnah, if it is Sahih, we take it, otherwise we will not take it. Sisters and brothers, give me an example from the Sita about something like that. Can you tell me a story or can you tell me an incident where it was very simple, yet it was amazingly remembered, people remember. Give an example. Yes? Mehraj, okay. Capturing of Rome. Make it simpler for you. This is a man in mood, right? Let me do, these are the steps we are talking about. Let me take one simple example, one of the most simple example, the first time Rasulullah did the dawah. All Rasulullah did, he went over to one of the hills of Safa and as the Arab custom would be, take up a garment and he would say, I am calling you to what? What was he calling to? One God. That's all. Was it simple? Can you get simpler than that? Not possible. You cannot get simpler than that. But subhanAllah, was it unexpected? Absolutely. He was talking about the army behind the enemy mountain and now he's talking about something about Akhara. People were like, oh, unexpected. It's stuck. It created a ripple in Makkah because people didn't expect Rasulullah to speak that way. But was it concrete? Yes, if you do that, what do you get? Jannah. If you don't do that, no Jannah. Khalas. SubhanAllah. Clear. Was it credible? Was it coming from someone they trust? The most trustworthy person, Rasulullah Al-Ameen, As-Sadiq. And then he created an emotional bond. He created, he told them about, subhanAllah, the paths of the Jannah. He told them how amazing Jannah is, how worshipping this rich, this, this impurities, these idols, what it will take them to. And then there was a story around it. The whole thing is a legend. And it is Quran and Sunnah. Sisters and brothers, if you want to read Islamic studies, you all have to do the follow up principle of success. When you tell a story of Noah, of Musa, of anybody, and people remember, that's the way they do it. 